Okay, now for this, that third thing I was talking about, to bring about a learning community, but also, which is really empowers the kid, the student, and me too, is what is a question? And we can use alarm, if it's a concept, we can use alarm. I'm not sure a question is a concept, but I'm thinking about that. But we have this question. This was a revision question that we were trying to use in history, um, modern history. And so what we tried to do was just use alarm as a means to understand the whole process of understanding what a question is, this type of question. I should emphasize that, this type of question. The first thing I have kids do is I underline the verb. I'm going to break it up into its parts and pieces. Maybe I should say this first. A question is a sentence. Okay? No, no big deal. It's, it's a question. It's, it's just a, a sentence. It's just like E equals MC squared. It's a concept. It's a sentence. It's somebody's concept of how the whole universe operates. All the bits and pieces and parts, what they are and so forth, how they're related. But basically, that's the subject, that's the verb, and those are the objects. This is composed of the. Three parts to a sentence, say. Okay? And you can understand anything like this. So we're going to break up this question into its parts. Three basic parts. First part, the verb. The verb because it tells us to do something or it asks something of us. Yeah? So the first thing I... The first reason, there are three reasons I want you to understand the verb, is the first thing the verb does is it tells them to do something. Duh. <laughs> it's a doing verb. Yeah? <clears throat> but that's very important because so many times we give assessment tasks or we ask questions and we give them a scenario and kids are reading, 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 and they're like, what do I got to do? What do I got to do? And they're a bit lost. But as soon as they see the verb, ah, it's an instructional, directional word. And on our exams, they're not always using those verbs or some of the verbs we, we like to use. They're now just using um, sometimes just the what, why, how type words. So sometimes, yeah. So when I see that and I see the way I can help the kids not become so frightened of this question because it tells them to do something. It tells them to focus. Focus usually on the subject. Yeah. So it tells them to do something. It's an instructional word. B. And this is really important. If it tells them to do something, if you have to do something, everything you do has to sort of requires a skill. So an intrinsic, inherent part of the verb itself, something about it, just like every fish in the ocean, swims at its own depth. Every verb, every skill has a certain depth. And you can see that. I can say, and, uh, sort of identify, recognize, list, state. I can use different verbs for each one of these levels. And one of the first things we did as a school was I asked the deputy principal of my school, because um, he's sort of in charge of the implementation of this. I said, and I'm just a regular teacher, so I can't just ask everybody, so I asked the deputy. Can we ask everybody, every teacher in the school, once I've trained them up on alarm, can we then, every teacher, make a list of the verbs you use in your subject? either as an individual teacher, your HSC questions, your assessment tasks, what verbs and where do they belong in this. Then I will compile a list for the whole school, yeah, of these are the verbs 
different people use throughout the whole school so that we can show them to the kids and they know where they belong. Now, of course, there are some verbs that don't, you can't just say, oh, it is there. Like the word discuss, where does it go? The word outline. Yeah, so we may have different verbs doing different things. But, but I do say this, if we as teachers are confused, where are the kids? Where are our students? So I, and, and plus, the verb actually tells you what I have to do at that level. So I'm trying to help the kids see that the question is helping them. So we made a list up and we share it. At least we're sort of on the same page. Because so many times in our staff room, you get people arguing, no, it means this, it means that. My question is, when is that too soon to give to the kids? If you're in a seven to 12 school or a, um, a full, because ours is only year 11 to 12, when is it, too, is it too soon for kids in year seven, high school, to find out these verbs? That's up to you and the organization. And I, the schools I go to, I often say, look, if you make up this list and send it to me, I'll send you my list. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. <laughs> but I'm not doing that unless you take some ownership. Yeah, it's no good me just giving the answers. You'll have to reflect on that. But again, I'll share my list if you show me yours. And the third part of the function of a verb, the characteristics of a verb, is that just by its very nature, the verb implies there is a certain structure. Just by the nature of the verb. If I ask them to explain something, they should have given me some features and characteristics and told me what they're talking about in the first place. If I ask them to analyze, they should have told me what they're talking about, give me some features, characteristics, what are they trying to do, and how do they do it? If I ask them to evaluate, critically evaluate, all of the above. And that's what the verb is trying to help them with. Okay? And why is that? I keep asking why. Why is that? Because, and this is a hard sentence to say, <clears throat> every higher order verb is comprised of the previous skills it took to get there. So it's by nature, by, it's quite natural, that if I ask that, you should have shown me the information it took to get there in the first place. Does that seem logical? Seems logical. Okay, that's for the verb. Now there's a glitch in this, and I, I rewrote this question a little bit, I edited it a little bit to teach this part. Okay, this part is this. If you got that question as a teacher or as a kid, as a student, do you think you would stop, according to that question, would you stop at the level of analyze? Would you just tell how Israel was promoting a settlement to the Arab-Israeli conflict? Is that all that question wants to know? Thank you. And suddenly what you see is <laughs> no. Because the second thing I have kids do is circle the subject. I mean, so many times I marked the HSC, the Higher School Certificate Exam, for 10 years. And so many times I'd see on their paper and on my assessment tasks or trials, I see them circling this, I see them triangularizing this, squiggly lining this, liquid paper out what they don't want to talk about. And there's no rhyme or reason to what they're doing. I'm trying to give them a skill of how to comprehend what a question is. What's it asking for? Simple. You break it up like alarm, break it up into its part. Verb, subject. Why do I want them to do this? Because with the subject, 
Every subject has certain words somewhere in the question. In this case, it's in the subject, but in other questions and in other subjects, it can be somewhere else. There are certain words in every subject just by the word itself implies they must make a value judgment. They must come to an evaluation of to what extent was it, in this case, successful. So I asked my deputy again for the implementation in our school as to make us a community. Can we get a list? Every teacher, can you make me a list of the words you use in your subject that imply just by its very nature you must make a value judgment? Words like, of course, success, uh, effective. This word I didn't know until actually I saw it. Um, impact. If I replace, analyze the impact, you would have to make a value as to the extent that the impact was to what extent it happened. Okay? And they came up with other, other words like use, useful, or analyze the use of something. Can imply they have to make a value judgment. But my question is this, what are you doing as a teacher? So it is a little confrontational. I ask myself this because I'm a bit of a self-blamer as a teacher. If the kids aren't getting it, the first thing I do is go, well, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm not doing something to help them see it, to comprehend it, to know it. So what can I do? What am I doing? What skill am I doing to help kids make a value judgment? I'm giving you some time to think about this. We see the answer to be right here. These positives and negatives. To weigh up which, out, which one outweighs the other so I can tell you the extent of success that was there. The extent that the impact was good or bad. And I don't want kids just saying, oh, it was good, okay. Or I don't want them to say it was bad, okay. Or it sucks. <laughs> Yeah, we tell kids, and we, value, we give kids an evaluation, we assess them, we say, oh, your knowledge and content and understanding was limited, basic, sound, profound, but what does it mean? I give these words of evaluation, but they don't know what they actually mean. And without meaning, we're lost. We're completely lost if we don't arrive at meaning. So what do I mean by the extent of this value judgment, this extent of success? I find this skill I can help kids understand is coming right here. So how do I help them, these positives and negatives? So again, I asked my deputy, deputy principal, I said, can we make a list of all the words that are the positives and all the words that are the negatives. I know when I make a template, a, a matrix for teachers, I make mistakes because I will use your words from my, my subject, like English. And I say, oh, it was good, bad, uh, beneficial, harmful. And that may not suit that particular subject or that particular teacher. So I ask, them, like I said, the teacher, the principal, deputy principal, can we make a list? All the words are positives like advantage, disadvantage. Advantage, and this one, the history teacher wanted undermine. I hadn't thought about that before. If we give this list to kids or help them arrive at this list, I call these words of empowerment. We can empower our kids learning because now they have these, the actual vocabulary to use. You know if you're marking papers, or at least if I'm marking papers and I go, oh, they're putting words down like um, promote, contribute, 
limit, decreased. If, as soon as I see these words of value words, they're getting the marks. Yeah, and these words, as I say, are words of empowerment. When is it too soon to give these words to kids? Would it be, would it be too soon to help the kids in year seven who are like 12, 13 year old kids maybe? Is it too soon to give these words? For them to arrive or, or for them to find them? I know they don't come to us in year 11. Remember, our school has kids from 35 different schools. We might have 13 classes in year 11 or 14 in year 12, and I try to get to as many as possible, and I ask them, especially in year 11, and they don't have these words. They're not coming to us with these skills. We have a year and about nine, eight, nine months to reshape these kids from year 11 to do their exams at the end of year 12. We don't have much time. And yet you've seen our results and we improve them because we empower them with these words. I have a warning though. If you give these words of empowerment to kids in year seven, they may just start thinking for themselves. Who? imagine that. They're gonna be able to talk us parents into why should I buy the latest technological achievement? Because they'll be able to outwit me and say, oh, it's beneficial. It's advantageous, it's good for me. So do we want that from our kids? Do we want them thinking for ourselves? Or do you want them thinking as we think? Again, it depends on your society and what you want in your society, what you want in your culture, what you want in your class. I might add here, some kids may never get there. Okay, they may never get to these higher, I mean, these are hard sentences to write. They're, they're very difficult at the higher end or the, the depth of reasoning. But if I equip my kids with this reflective process, if I equip my kids with ability to at least begin thinking for themselves, maybe they'll be good people. <laughs> Sometimes also, maybe I can just raise a kid who is around this, this banding, these marks. Maybe I can help them improve in their marks just a little bit. When I flip that up, we said like these are the higher band kids. We can band these kids. Maybe I can raise their banding. And when I raise a kid and they're learning even a little bit, I'm overwhelmed. I'm so happy because, and the kid feels happy because they've achieved at least something along the way. They'll never know this, maybe. They'll never know the concept, maybe. Some kids could get there if I show them. And that's what I'm trying to do, just raise the bar just a little bit and help them. Back to our question. We see some of the subject that by the subject they have to make a value judgment and I'm letting the kids in on this. I don't keep it a secret or a mystery. Maybe just by that little glitch, they'll go from the 89 to that 90 or whatever your A range is. That one, that one mark can just, just this whole skill of arriving at a judgment to this. What do I do next with this question? I go to the third part. I squiggly line all the rest. Yeah, it's just a sentence, three parts. I know sometimes some questions have two verbs. Oh, but again, the verbs will tell them to go to a certain depth with that subject, but I squiggly line the rest. Why? All the rest, the squiggly line part in the question is my content. That's all this stuff above that line 
that I was trying to get into them. One by hook or by crook, one way or another, I'm trying to get to them to understand that content. And the skills in the process to do so, to end up at that level. So looking at this, what is a question, this type of question? There's only three parts. Shall I give you the answer? The concept of this question? Oh, I see some heads, yes. Hey, head. <laughs> so, what is this? What is a question? This type of question. Basically, it's this. I want you to look at, from all of your content, all the stuff I was trying to teach you, I want you to take that content, focus on that, and go that deep. That's all this question is. Out of all of your content, focus on this and go that deep. The glitch may be, I want you to go that deep, but that's all this question is. And also, also, one extra little bonus part is there is a certain structure you can follow. I'm letting you in on, on the structure of how you can organize your content to focus on that and go that deep. My response is, my teaching is, the question is your friend. It's there to help you. Yeah? So many times I say, teachers say, come on, and kids go, no it isn't. I go, no. I'm not saying just tell me everything you know, like you did on your essay or your, on your answer. So many times that kids say, you get seven out of 10, and the girl goes, what's wrong? I told you everything I know. I said, I know, but you didn't answer the question. The question was there to help you. You had to focus on this from all your content and go just this deep. So it's there to help you. The question is your friend. It's there to help you.